Hello, I'm Barry Mackay, and I'll be speaking to a couple of international gay marriage experts that are here in Australia at the moment, in Sydney, for Gay Mardi Gras 2012, Professor Lee Badgett and Boris Dietrich from the Netherlands, and I'll also be speaking to Rodney Kroom of Australian Marriage Equality. Why would a same-sex couple want to get married, and what are the benefits? Well, there are different kinds of benefits. Sometimes there are legal uh, benefits to getting married. Um, but primarily, uh, what we hear from couples is that they're looking for something else. They're looking for an expression of love and commitment to the person they're marrying. They want to do it in front of the people that they love, their friends and family members, so that, so that those people can help them create this new family, this new kind of relationship. And, um, and in many cases, they're looking to um, to give greater security to their children if they have them, or sometimes they're thinking they want to have kids, so that's why they get married. Are there psychological benefits? Yes, same-sex couples report feeling much more socially included. Uh, they feel more normal um, in the context of a society that now recognizes their right to marry. They sometimes report feeling a greater sense of commitment to their partners, to the person that they married, their new spouse. And, uh, and they think their kids have uh, psychological benefits as well in terms of feeling more secure. The Netherlands was the first country in the world to introduce same-sex marriage into law in 2001. When I was Member of Parliament in the Netherlands in 1994, I uh, proposed same-sex marriage in Parliament and uh, I must say that in the beginning, uh, because there were no same-sex marriages anywhere in the world, people said, well, legally you might be right, but why should we be the first and why should we uh, introduce same-sex marriage, what's the benefit? And, uh, all those kind of arguments. So it took a long, long time with a state commission uh, and uh, first we had registered partnership but then in the end in 2001 we implemented the same-sex marriage bill and to answer your question actually the world didn't fall apart, no revolution broke out, God didn't punish the Netherlands as far as I know and people are happy to get married and it's a freedom of choice. Uh, if you don't want to get married, you don't, you don't get married. But if you do, you can. And so there is marriage equality in the Netherlands for more than 10 years now. And it's functioning. It's working well. This issue is now firmly at the centre of Australian political debate. And it certainly has a very high profile. Um, recently, of course, when Magda Zabanski came out, she... Uh, she became part of a, of a much larger push that includes many celebrities and many ordinary Australians who support this issue and we know from opinion polls that over 60% of Australians think this reform should happen and 75% think it's inevitable. Even 53%, and that's a majority of Australian Christians, support this reform. So clearly this re reform um, is a high profile one and it has the support of a majority of Australians the challenge now is to translate that support into support in Parliament. Increasing the security and well-being of families is something that, that increases uh, the well-being of society as a whole. It's, uh, we're talking about you know, potentially hundreds of thousands of same-sex couples, millions maybe around the world, who would like to get married. And if you improve their lives, you've actually improved the lives of society as a whole. But clearly, you know, there are benefits beyond that. I think uh, there are benefits to the, to the families of those individuals um, as they become more welcoming of new members in their families their benefits to their children, you know, their kind of ripple effects on outward into, into local communities, feeling more equal, the benefits of, of equality and valuing diversity are things that businesses care a lot about, for instance, and then, you know, the, you can even get down to the level of saying it'll be a benefit to, to the wedding industry as more same-sex couples have the right to marry and will be out there spending money getting married. And what about the Catholic vote? Why did such staunch Catholic countries like Spain and Portugal and in South America, Argentina, introduce gay marriage? Why? It's actually because they realize that marriage equality is the right thing to do, that you cannot have first class and second class citizens in one country. Everybody should be treated equally. And so I'm really admiring Roman Catholic members of parliament in Argentina, in Spain and Portugal, because the Roman Catholic Church really put pressure on them and said, uh, listen, if you vote for the same-sex marriage bill, we can ostracize you. We can." Uh, 
send you away from the Roman Catholic Church. And still, those members of Parliament, Roman Catholic members of Parliament, voted in favor of the same-sex marriage bill because they knew it's the right thing to do. They wanted to be on the right side of history. Very interestingly, there were many uh, members of Parliament in the Netherlands, Roman Catholic members of Parliament, who voted against the same-sex marriage bill. Several of them, by the way, voted in favor. But I've spoken to several of them uh, who were against the same-sex marriage bill, and they now say, after I, they have seen how committed same-sex couples are and how happy they are uh, being able to get married, that they now say, I don't understand why I was led by fear and why I thought that the institution of marriage would uh, you know, be um, diminished because of same-sex couples. Uh, being able to get married, they now say, I'm in favor of it and I changed my opinion. So uh, people, um, you know, they develop and they see the benefits of same-sex marriage and they can change their minds. And what about the elderly? The public opinion polls would suggest one big factor that predicts whether or not people think same-sex couples should have the right to marry, and that's age. So I think people who are who are older and maybe more invested in certain kinds of traditions appear to have a harder time than younger people in um, in seeing, you know, seeing the the worth of letting gay couples get married. I think that sometimes. Um, those people appear to change their minds when they are educated about uh, the fact that there's nothing bad that happens. Uh, sometimes they are more likely to see it as a good thing when someone that they know or someone that they love is also uh, somebody in a same-sex couple who wants to get married and they, they, they see why it's important for those people that they care about and that can change their minds. What can Australia learn from the overseas experience of same-sex marriage? There's two things that we can learn. Firstly, that when reform happens, the sky doesn't fall in. Uh, we've heard from experts such as Professor Lee Badgett, uh, from campaigners such as Boris Dietrich, that uh, when reform occurs overseas, the dire predictions of those who oppose equality just don't come true. Marriage doesn't disintegrate. The family isn't destroyed. Children aren't disadvantaged. People won't start marrying their cars or their pets or their plasma screens. It just doesn't happen. But more importantly, I think what we learn from the overseas experience is that this reform has really important positive impacts. That same-sex couples feel more committed, that the children being raised by same-sex couples feel more secure and have greater stability in their lives, that there's greater participation in family and community life from same-sex couples and their children, and that the societies which adopt this reform feel themselves to be uh, more equitable and fairer societies. If this reform can happen as it has in Spain, in Portugal and Argentina and in South Africa, in countries with such diverse cultural backgrounds and in some cases strong religious traditions, then it says a lot about Australia that it can't yet happen here. And I think it will say equally a lot about Australia when it does happen that we are fulfilling our promise and our dream, if you like, of being a nation that recognises and um, affirms a fair go. I really hope that Australia um, will join uh, the group of countries that have introduced same-sex marriage because Australia is seen in the rest of the world as a progressive country which values non-discrimination and tolerance and so I hope that um, Australia will be next. It will be of uh, highly symbolical value also for the whole Asia Pacific region once Australia has introduced same-sex marriage so I really hope that it's going to be in the next country on uh, the list. My hope is that by the time this issue comes to be debated in Parliament Tony Abbott will have sent a stronger message that it's possible for our coalition MPs and senators to vote for this and freed his front benches to do so. Um, that would only be reasonable uh, given that the Labor Party has a conscience vote and that the Liberal Party of course prides itself on being the party of um, individual freedom and uh, personal choice. It seems ironic that given those values it doesn't have, it doesn't allow its members the same freedom as Labor members currently have. I hope that those values, 
those liberal, smaller liberal values that the Liberal Party says it stand for, stands for, will win out. What would you say to your average Aussie who hasn't made their mind up yet on this subject? If you value uh, commitment in relationships, if you believe that love is more important than prejudice, if you believe that all Australian children should have the same opportunities regardless of who their parents are, then please consider supporting this reform.